so i'm trying to get my hair done and as soon as i finish working on this video i'll just dash back to the salon and have it taken care of once and for all i mean it's sunday tomorrow is monday i have to get ready for the new week new targets positive vibes chasing my dreams just like everyone else if it's your first time here i am a coach and you may consider subscribing to my channel because i have really nice content and most importantly i am super now on this video today i'd like to talk to you guys about how to get a job in an international school i am a teacher myself i teach in an international school currently i've been teaching in international schools for a considerable number of years not in one school but several so i feel quite confident to just you know come out here and share with you guys on how you can get yourself into one okay so first thing as a teacher you have to be confident to get space in an international school. I mean, your confidence really matters because then you'll be talking with parents. Uh, you'll once in a while you'd get into contact with suppliers and stuff. So you have to be really confident as an individual. And again, uh, why do I keep doing that? Really. Anyway, again, um, you you have to have good spoken english i mean if you're going to teach young children and uh, for instance you, you're talking about the color red then you'll find yourself talking about color lead which may not be acceptable so if you have this mother tongue interference thing you may want to start you know working on it it may not be easy but i think with practice it just comes so your english has to be on top no mother tongue good vocabulary you know you speak well the way you articulate yourself when you're talking to someone they can understand you and you know you can just express yourself in a way that everyone around you can actually understand okay another thing you must have some relevant qualifications okay you want to be a teacher you want to teach in an international school then you have to have at least a degree all right and um uh, most of these schools, if you don't have a degree, you may not really be able to get into the system because having qualifications is very important to them. Because I think it's assumed that as long as you have a degree, then uh, there's a good percentage that you'll be able to deliver the content that will be expected from you to the children in a positive way so you have to take care of your qualifications otherwise if you don't have a degree you may want to you know start working on it now and make sure you go to a good university a university that is recognized because they will also check you have a degree you went to college yes you're a teacher fine you have experience okay but where did you go to school so you want to be careful on you know where you're going to get your degree whatever and if you have one then yeah you know where you are you know where you are and then of course your appearance for you to work in to get a job in an international school you have to you have to look fine you have to you know look well groomed your nails your hair and i don't know maybe i should i, I don't know whether the skin matters but you just have to look presentable the way you dress even your shoes and stuff like that and again it's different for all schools you find that the way teachers dress in an American school is very different to the way teachers dress in a British curriculum school so depending on where you are you'll get into the system and then you'll just know you know if you're going you know you're going for an interview in an American school then talk to people who are in those schools if you can okay if you don't if you don't know anyone you can you can get in touch with me and I'm, I'm, I'll give you a name or I'll give you a suggestion or I'll tell you myself because I've worked in both systems, okay? So if you're going to an American school for an interview, there's a way you'll dress. If you're going to a, um, you know, a British Caribbean school, there's, there's a way you'll dress. So small, small things, but they really, they really do add up, okay? And then another thing is your CV. Your CV, curriculum vitae, has to be, um, you know, up to date, with all the information well explained, your experience, uh, your qualifications, um, your, your hobbies, and all these things that you may want to have in a CV. 
okay and it's well explained and everything that you have in there should be authentic i mean you, you can't put lies on your cv so just make sure you're real and everything you, you've listed on your cv that oh you know i can coach hockey they will give you a session with children and then they'll ask you go coach them you want to see what you can do or you'll say oh I, I know how to swim so i can help children swim and you know i'm confident in swimming and stuff like that they will take you to the pool and ask you all right you have these two children show us how you coach them or how you teach them swimming okay so you have to be very careful about what you put on your cv it has to be super detailed and you should be able to prove everything that you've listed you can do okay and again your cv should be detailed in a way that they will not have to ask you for you know more information about what you have written it should be clear enough and you know that in, if anyone picks your cv they can tell what you are all about almost in an instant and again it should not be too long you want to make it short and relevant okay and of course no spelling mistakes you don't want to become a teacher and you're making mistakes yourself in your CV. That again may let you down. So no spelling mistakes. And then the time you send your application out there. If you're looking for a job in an international school, then the best time is now. Between January and February. Okay. So schools have actually started advertising for positions now for people to start working in September. And those teachers who want to move from their schools to other international schools, they are resigning now. They have they actually have until January the 15th to declare their, their stand. So if you want to get into the system, this is the time that you send out your applications between January and end of February. And then you start working in September. Okay, and again, depending on how you put, uh, depending on how you apply for the position, if the position is uh, advertised on the papers, then you'll send your application, and then they, they normally, they normally add uh, a statement somewhere at the bottom or somewhere within the advertisement that you should, that there should be no conversing, no calling, no follow up, and stuff like that. So if you do your application um i mean if you send your cv out there based on an advertisement you saw on the papers then you cannot follow up individually okay you you can't follow up on your application but if you go into the website or someone tells you there's a job somewhere and you send your application and after two weeks there's no response then it's your responsibility to you know reach out to the school and ask about your application and you know how far they've gone with it i hope that's clear enough okay so if there's no clause you should not follow up you, you just you are just told there's a, there's a position in this school or you just went to their um, uh, website and got the position you apply then please follow up okay because these people are busy so follow up and then um for you to start looking for a job in an international school, the best way is you can actually Google international schools in Kenya or international schools in Uganda, international schools in Tanzania, depending on where you want to work. So you Google, you find out about the schools, and then between now and February, you'll be checking their websites for them to post their, I mean, the, the vacancies for the next school year. The next school year for uh, for American schools, a new school year actually starts in August for American schools and it starts in September for British curriculum schools. So then, you know, go to these websites, check what they have there. They will always post their vacancies and then choose which school you want to apply to. Okay, so if you apply to five or you apply to four, you'll definitely or most likely uh, they will call you to two interviews maybe three maybe four and then you'll get offers and you decide which one to go for depending on the benefits and whatever they're offering though most international schools are more or less at the same level when it comes to pay and benefits another thing when you go for the interview when you're lucky enough and you've got an opportunity to go for the interview 
they will always ask you would you like a cup of tea or coffee or something like that you don't want to say no thank you or no it's okay i'm fine you are not fine because you are there to look for a job so how are you fine if you are offered a cup of tea or coffee which you are definitely going to be offered please choose one you can say may i have a cup of coffee please or may i have some tea or may i just have a glass of water it makes more sense and then at the interview uh, once they finish uh, interviewing you they will ask you do you have any other question make sure you ask a question don't go no i don't have any questions for now no 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 you are looking for a job they've interviewed you they've asked you more than enough questions you must ask at least one question or two or better three but two questions i recommend two questions two questions are enough ask the first one give them time to answer then ask another one and then tell them that's all you have for now so asking questions after the interview is very very important because then you come out as someone who is interested in the job someone who's proactive and you know you're not just there looking for a job but you know what exactly you are looking for and again uh, when you go for the interview uh, most international schools will they will uh, ask you know you, you'll have a verbal interview and then they will also give you a class to teach to show you know what you can actually do depending on what you had, you had indicated and depending on what is being featured on your curriculum vitae so they will first give you a class so when you're given that class teach like you have never taught before you could either be in class or they could take you to the field to do something practical with the children they can decide to give you a topic or they can leave you to come up with a topic for yourself you know subject line on of what you're going to teach so you have to be nice with the children you have to get along with them you have to ask them questions you have to be somewhat exciting you know someone children would like to be around and you have to give children a platform where they they are able to ask you questions don't be a teacher who just talks and talks and talks and talks okay so give children an opportunity to ask you questions ask them questions and if they get it wrong then you know you 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 ask another student who will also try to come up with an answer and then if they're all not getting it then you give them an answer and then you also give the children an opportunity to ask your question so you know you want to have a very interactive session with the children because then that you know brings it brings you out like a very experienced teacher who knows what he or she is doing okay so you want to think about having an interactive session with the children don't be there non-stop let children talk let them ask you questions some of them may even ask you questions which are not even related to the uh, to what you're teaching them but then you, you have to figure out how you can go around that question and make that particular student understand that you have no problem with the question but you're happy to answer it at the end of the lesson then that makes a lot of sense rather than you asked a question and then you, you don't answer that particular student and you assume like you didn't hear or you tell them no 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 that is not part of this lesson you're moving on no 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 remember this is an international school where every student matter okay so they ask your question you have to make this student understand why you cannot answer the question during that time and then promise them that after the lesson you're happy to give them the answer okay and um once you go there you'll have uh the the interviewing panel you you'll find that mostly it's normally a mixed race so don't go there with some prejudice that you, you know you're thinking uh this one is like this this one is like this no just go there with an open mind and then um one thing i would like to mention which i feel is very very important for you to get your foot into an international school okay and especially if you're still young or let's say you're married and your partner has a good job and so they can keep you for the time you, that you maybe you don't have some income coming in the best way ever to get into the international uh, school system is by volunteering 
I tell you, volunteer in the school of your choice. Because even getting an opportunity to go and volunteer will take you some work. You'll apply and then go for it. They will still interview you to go and volunteer. And then once you are in volunteering, you will work so hard. You will work smart. They'll be seeing you there every day. And I tell you what, in every international school, at the end of every year, there's always there's always a vacancy, at least two or three in any international school. That's at least written minimum three vacancies for whatever level of the school. So you want to go and volunteer, do your best, um, you know, deliver, get along with the teachers, get along with the colleagues. And as these people are seeing you, they, you know, they start getting comfortable with you. They'll be checking on how you're working with the students. And of course, at the end of the day, they're going to be very happy. And when there is an opening, they will consider you. You'll be the first one they will consider. And at this time, you'll realize that you will not even have to make an application, you know, like send an application or apply formally. They'll just call you into the office and ask you, okay, fine. We've seen what you what you can do, what you're able to do, and to have this opening, would you like to take it? Then it becomes very easy. But you see, again, when you volunteer, it means that um, you will not be getting any salary you won't be getting any money but that will just be for a, a short period which is okay uh, life is about sacrifice you you can work for three four months without any income but if you just hang in there they will definitely give you a job at some point because they are always opening so consider volunteering if you don't have a job yet and again you, you may say that ah, i work in this school there's no way i'm going to leave my job to go and volunteer in some school that's okay too you can still get yourself into an international school as long as you have the qualifications that we talked to you have the experience you're good with children you know and the school you're working at when, when you're leaving uh, they should give you like a good recommendation letter so coming from one school to the next also really works uh, and um yeah because of your experience you, you'll have like a higher a higher chance of getting in but what i was saying is it's easier to get into an international school through the path of volunteering because then it's it's almost automatic but then um like i've said you'll just walk around it and see what works for you try your ways but um what i can say is if you're a teacher working in international school is probably one of the best things that can ever happen to any teacher because um the working environment is really super super nice and um there's a lot more i could talk about but for now i think um, i should stop here so the video is not too long so i have a lot more content about international school which i'll talk about in the next video so make sure you stay on subscribe to my channel uh, hit the notification button so whenever i update you are notified so you know and of course don't forget to share with your friends and loved ones i mean anyone who may find this information useful to them and especially to teachers or those who want to change their um, their career to become teachers or something like that okay so for now that's all i have for today and i hope to see you in the next video bye for now cheers